All right, everyone, since this video is going on YouTube, we cannot delve fully into the context of the censorship that this particular video is about. Link in the description, archived, of course. I'll probably talk about it later a little bit on the live stream. Not sure, actually, that I will get to live streaming today. Schedule remains a little wonky, and remember, tomorrow we're traveling, so there won't be one. We've got to talk about uh, the Biden White House provably, objectively, and we now have the email smoking gun, thank you very much, uh, pressuring tech sites into censoring lawful uh, speech by uh, U.S. users. Uh, this did happen. It came directly from the Biden White House. Now, we knew that there was the insinuation of that on Twitter already. We got that in the Twitter files. This involves Facebook. So once again, those of us who said, oh, yeah, you're only seeing the tip of the iceberg. Just wait a little bit longer. It'll get far more damning. Uh, we were predictably right again. So Facebook was directly involved in the White House's unconstitutional attempts to muzzle lawful speech, specifically with regards to medical misinformation. Wink, wink, honk, honk. Um, that's, that's what these emails at least pertain to. It goes further than that. That is a big one. Um, but what we've seen over the last couple of years is political disinfo is thrown in there, um, despite the fact that the actual disinfo is generally the claim that a post is misinformation. Uh, you do definitely, in every election, you have people, used to be a meme, now it's taken more seriously, uh, telling people false data about how to vote, like, you know, text here to vote and shit like that. Um, that, that particular behavior does deprive people potentially, at least if they're fucking idiots, of their vote. So, you, know, you can round about, you can kind of justify that. But when you claim that some random U.S. user is being paid by the Russians because they happen to make a post topically similar to something you conceive of as wrong or spammy, um, that it becomes a problem when the group pushing that and then pushing for a reaction, which is suspension, removal of material, deboosting or whatever, happens to be the White House. And this, by the way, one of the biggest copes was, well, this was happening under Trump's White House, too. Sorry, but this is, uh, this is into the Biden uh, admin era. The, the stewardship of Joe Biden had begun several months prior to when these emails begin. They stepped up pressure basically about this disinformation uh, and then they threatened Facebook quite literally if you read the emails they contain fairly obvious threats basically you're not doing enough you're not banning enough people you're not taking this seriously so we're looking at our options right now again it's sort of like hey it would be a terrible thing if your beautiful business here were to get broken into or you know, the water line gets damaged, you come back, it's all flooded, maybe it burns to the ground. You know, maybe maybe uh, people are warned that they should not shop here by several very uh, uh, gloomy looking dudes in trench coats out front. But if you pay me some money, you know, it's, uh, none of these things will happen. We'll have a guard there to make sure no, no bad guys harass you. It's mafia tactics. You haven't openly threatened. The mafioso didn't show up at the business and say, look, I'm going to break your kneecaps backwards and burn your car and, and bomb your business if you don't fucking pay up. No, 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 you don't do that. That's, a, that's legally, uh, that's a bad idea. It, what you do is you insinuate. You say bad things tend to happen to people who fuck with me. That's what the Biden White House did with Facebook. Now, it's not exactly a revelation. We were told months ago by Zuckerberg himself that this sort of thing was happening. But what we didn't have was email correspondence between members of the Biden White House and people at Facebook. So Twitter, Facebook, we know that it involves Google. Well, I think there were actually fucking leaks about it. I have some inside knowledge with regards to their deboosting system, by the way, uh, courtesy of several individuals that worked with them as freelancers years in the past. Um, I believe them because what I've seen appears to corroborate what they were telling me, by the way. Um, we know that it goes further. Apple involves itself with this, basically, unless it's new tech, in which case uh, they're, they're more under the radar. So, for example, there's no rule against this particular kind of material on Rumble, uh, on BitChute, on Odyssey, Minds.com. Uh, you can write a Substack article about it. Uh, nobody cares. By the way, Elon Musk did cryptically hint about a willingness to potentially buy Substack and incorporate its features into Twitter. Sounds all right. I'm not sure how I feel about that, though. Why not just have a function similar on Twitter itself uh, or something like that? Compete directly instead of uh, tying sites together like a, like a little like beads onto a string. 
doesn't make as much sense as having uh, the function be more native. Uh, that's good. Twitter has reversed course, at least partially on this, although it be I believe the deboosting is back. To be clear, the shadow banning and algorithmic demotion of material appears still to be in effect on Twitter now after a reprieve of about a month. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but it's being reported on by numerous individuals. It could have to do with site growth too, so uh, I'll keep an open mind for the moment. Um, but this should not be happening. To be clear, when the government is effectively attempting to use a private entity to restrict lawful speech, it is violating the First Amendment. This should result in a class action lawsuit. It needs to be investigated by the House. They're gearing up to do so. It appears to be one of their first orders of priority, which gives me some degree of hope that they will actually do their fucking job. It's been a while, to be clear. You got some work done in the third year of Donald Trump's presidency. Everything else for a very long time has been pretty bleak. Do you remember the Boehner years? <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, hopefully they actually get their asses in gear, look into it, trigger an investigation, do more discovery, and then let a class action suit proceed. Meanwhile, make every possible attempt to amend Section 230 to keep this from happening. If they are a platform, they should not be policing any lawful speech. Go after illegal content, non-speech like spam, botting, robots don't have free speech rights, you know, sorry AI, etc. Uh, things like actual threats of violence, things like that terrorist recruitment, things that are illegal for reasons other than what's being said. It's because of a, an effect that the speech potentially or does have. Meanwhile, if you want to be a publisher and go after the lawful speech, that's fine too, but then you have to crack down on copyrighted material. You'll be legally liable for that. You'll be liable if you host anything illicit, so be very careful. No reasonable site, by the way, would choose the publisher side of it because they'd get attacked by bots, run by people that don't like them, and they'd get knocked off the internet. It would effectively force them all to become real platforms. That's great. Otherwise, you have to become an on-demand service. You know, YouTube uh, de decides to be a publisher, that's fine, but you'll only have on-demand content. You will revert effectively into nothing more than a series of TV channels with a handful of priority, cherry-picked, hand-picked, very carefully picked personalities and, like, shit from Netflix and stuff like that. That'll be YouTube, uh, effectively. Facebook, which is explicitly a platform and has no other purpose, either you fold or you act like a platform. No more Biden admin encouraging you to ban people for so-called misinformation. Earth to everyone here. It is not illegal for you to spread disinformation. It's not illegal for you to spread outright goddamn propaganda. If, if, if you are knowingly spreading literal state propaganda, you can do that. It's your opinion, man. It's lawful speech. You, you haven't uh, uh, encouraged terrorism or anything like that. So uh, publishers, I mean a platform, should leave the material alone. So this uh, makes it more damning. It's beyond Twitter. It's all of the sites. We have the fucking emails. This is not, by the way, nearly the end of this. You're going to get more Twitter files. I'm sure you'll see more of this. You're probably, you're eventually, you're going to get like the Google files and stuff like that too. That's about all. Peace out.